Hello everyone and welcome back to another Good Game Empire video. Today we're going to talk, talk about changes in the September update and what's new in the game. Also, attention all Epic Good Game Empire players, we have a new giveaway for each and every one of you and 5 lucky winners can get Sasaki offerings to batteries. So stay tuned till the end of this video and you're gonna know exactly what to do to have a chance of winning this Sasaki offerings. So now moving on to the changes. And when we're talking about a new update, I also wanted to mention the community hub, which I, I didn't have a chance to present to you before. So it's kind of a forum 2.0, a new kind of forum, but you can't talk here, you can only read the announcements. Because basically Discord is now for uh, all the kind of discussion, and this is purely for announcements. So we're gonna uh, take all the information about the update from here. Uh, we have this post about what was been changed in this update. And this is where my, you know, information is sourced from. Right, so the first change in the game is new, two new construction items. So the construction items are for the refinery and for the toolsmith. Um, so what these items do, they are the relic slot, premium relic items. So they are at the end of this list here. And first you need to unlock them in the, uh, in the research tower. Yeah, so crafting manual, no, not crafting uh, blueprints. And they are the last two here at the bottom last section. Um, and you need to, in order to actually create these items, even for level one, you need to unlock the first uh, like stage of these blueprints. And when you've got that covered, then you can proceed to crafting them. So what these items give you, they give you a bonus output for refinery resources and the same goes for the toolsmith components. But the thing is, they are a bit expensive uh, because they cost you 10 fabric for starters and the price increases by 7 fabric for each next level you want to create them. Um, and I already made these items so I can show you how they work. So I've got level 1 for the refinery because I'm kinda running low on the fabric and I need to first improve my uh, Beyond the Horizon combat strength items for, you know, flank, front, uh, ranged and melee soldiers. But anyways, I created the item for the refinery and as you can see, we're getting 606 uh, refined food and same for the stone. Uh, so we're getting 1% more um, of these resources here thanks to the site. And for the toolsmith, I think that uh, it's more important because you rather need more uh, components from toolsmith than refined you know, resources from the uh, refinery. So anyways, I've got myself level 4 item, which gives me 4 extra percent to the output and that gives me 624 of these items here, instead of 600. Uh, yeah, so that's a nice addition. If you have your Beyond the Horizon combat items on good levels like level 15, 20 and they are already very expensive to upgrade to higher levels, uh, then I think it's a good idea to consider um, creating these items and upgrading them to level like 5, maybe for bigger players to even level 10, 15. So you're getting more of these items, especially for, as I said before, the toolsmith, because it's very crucial to, you know, get as many of these um, components which you create in here as possible, because many players are running low on this. And this is, you know, like the bottleneck of the production, um, you know, process for the new tools, so uh, this is the one you're probably going to go for. Uh, yeah, that's it for, for this item. Right, so moving on, the second change in the August update is um, changes to the Glory Events reward pool. So both individual and alliance rewards are changed in the way that the um, Beyond the Horizon materials are removed from the rewards completely and that's filled with gold and silver coins instead. So you're gonna get way more silver and gold uh, pieces for your purchases at Master Blacksmith uh, at, the, uh, at the cost of less Beyond Horizon items. Also, some offerings to Ulrich um, will be added to these rewards as well. And yeah, that's it for, for the glory targets. We can also check double check this here. Mm, yep, that's, that's it basically for glory targets. And the third change in this update is the Alliance Boosters. So two new Alliance Boosters or improvements, whatever you call that, they are at the bottom and they are designed for the Samurai event. So actually what, what caught my attention here is that they have 34% and the Nomad Boosters have for some reason 33 
percent. So we get one extra percent here. Uh, so anyways, you launch them same as for the nomads. You pay with Bastion Dublons, and well, in case of our alliance, we have a lot of them, like tens of thousands of these Dublons. So I guess you can really um, spend these Dublons and run a lot of these boosters, which are very juicy because if you have the player sub number one and you launch this thing, they're only going to skip 30 minutes cooldown for each attack. And the second booster is actually even more interesting because it's for the Daimyo castles, because they take more time to skip, the more cooldown time here. So it's even better because it's a percentage, um, you know, difference. So you're gonna just cut one third of the time needed to, to skip for all the Daimyo castles. The cost is also in Bastion Dublons, so yeah, that's a nice addition, I guess. And the fourth change, a little change, but yeah, it was a bit frustrating for the Outer Realms. So, you know, we've got these new messaging restrictions in the game and they were also working in Outer Realms and Beyond the Horizon, even though they weren't supposed to, I assume, um, because you had to be level 16, I believe, to be able to send messages. And on the Outer Realms, if you're not, you know, buying rubies, it's hard to get level 16, obviously, uh, but I guess you'd like to send some messages anyways on level 11 or 12, whatever. So they changed it in a way that now you can message any player uh, starting from level 11 on Beyond the Horizon and Outer Realms. That's a really handy change, I guess. Oh, and one, one change that's going to affect only some of you, but um, this part of you that was um, experiencing um, this issue, well, will be very glad for this change to be in the game. I'm talking about the city guards and the um, difficulties in making an espionage in events. So the story goes like, if you build up a lot of guard houses in the previous version of the game, um, the automatic like scaling of the difficulty of event scaling, however you call this, Assume that if you have more city guards, then the event targets will also have more city guards and they're going to make it... Oh yeah, I can't scan that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm talking about this place, about the, the um, number of guards here. Here, number of city guards at event targets. So if you had a lot of guards yourself in your main castle, and then this number would go up, um, you know, responsively uh, to your city guards. But if you were to demolish your guard houses, this number would actually not go down, it would stay. So the highest amount of your guard houses would define how many guards uh, will event targets have. And it was, it was really a pain, you know, because it was like 90% chance of failing in espionage at event targets, so it was kind of unplayable for, for these uh, players affected. And now it's changed, so if you demolish your guard houses, then you can easily make an espionage again. Yeah, but why people are building this many guard houses? For example, I have my neighbor here from our war um, war enemy alliance, and he has plenty of these guard houses. And I guess even after this update, he's not dropping on them. Why? Uh, because this gives you a significant boost to your courtyard capacity. So we, if we take a look, you'll see that this uh, yeah this building actually gives you a lot of space for a courtyard. 7,000 for your own troops and extra 3.5 thousand for alliance support troop capacity. So in total it gives you 10,000 each and if he has like 20 of them, I assume because by the number of guards it's about 20 of these buildings maxed out, that's extra 200,000 troops on the courtyard. So that's a significant change, but at the expense of not being able to make an espionage on event targets. So yeah, there's that. So I guess that's all the changes we wanted to talk about this um, this update. I hope that it wasn't this quick because I have a tendency to talk very quickly, especially after having so long breaks and you know having a lot of motivation to record new videos. But anyways, moving on to the giveaway. Obviously, I'm not going to make it that easy for you to have a chance of winning this Sasaki offering, which by the way is worth is theoretically worth in the game um, 100,000 uh, rubies or correspondingly 20 dollars or 20 euro or something like that in the um, you know profit bundles in the super sale. So anyways, um, your task is to leave a comment obviously writing your username, your server and your platform which is PC or Empire for Kingdoms Android or Empire for Kingdoms iOS. 
So after you write down those three uh, things, then my question is, how did your journey with Good Game Empire actually start? Do you remember any, you know, stories about the first days in the game? Who introduced you to the game? How did it actually start? How did you find out about the game, maybe? Or what was your first alliance and what was your first impressions? Why did you get so hooked up in the game? You know, any kind of story connected with the beginning of your story in Good Game Empire. Yeah. So that's the uh, question, write it in the comment together with these three parameters I mentioned before. So your uh, server, your name and your platform and you have a chance of winning a Sasaki offering, we will pick five random winners. So, you know, there's no a good or bad answer to this question, obviously. I just need to write some story, so it's easier than just writing your name. And I guess that's it. So, yeah, uh, good luck in the giveaway, and I hope this video was very informative and helpful for you to understand what was changed in this update. I also prepared a video about the uh, Masters of Might, Outer realms, but I'm waiting for another run of Masters of Might to actually be in the game, so I'm gonna publish this video when it starts here in the game. Yeah, so that's it for this video, and remember to leave a thumbs up so this video pops for more people's home pages on YouTube, and subscribe, join my Discord server, and you know, check out all the social media, and see you in the next one. Bye. And also, Uwaga. Hello, friend.